God be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I have is two things. Like even if you looked at verse ten, and you you, you guys got your Bibles with you, uh, <laughs> verse ten I thought was that deceive all, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. I, I'm, first of all, you got to focus on the fact that we were talking earlier about judging somebody whether they're gonna be saved or not, whatever. The point is that the people who have rejected the truth. They're the ones that are going to be susceptible to this. If we're going to equip our saints, and that's what we're trying to do ourselves and with other people, is look, we receive the truth. You preach the truth. They receive yeah. the truth. They're not going to be in this category of them that perish. Because only them that perish because they receive not what? Yeah, they the receive not the, the love of the truth. Of the truth. That they might, that they be, might saved. be saved. Come on, bro. So they, they, and which goes right back Come on. to the only sin that's going to send you to hell. Come on. That is to deny Christ. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why he's called the Antichrist, right? Amen. I want, I want to, I want everybody to fall up under me to include those who believe in Christ. And then there's a concern about the great falling away. But look, and don't forget that he said that if it was not for his intervention, yeah, that even the very elect, elect. yeah, listen, it had it not been for his, so 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 we 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 have to be very careful because yeah. again, deception cannot be deception by definition if you know you're being deceived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have to believe that you know and that you're right and that you can prove it. By every means necessary. Let me tell you something. This is something. And I would and I would ask two questions. One, all these folks that are telling people that you better, you not stop, you better, 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 better. Bring your tithe and offering to the church. I don't care what happens, you have to sit on the door, whatever, whatever. Knowing the folks are not paying their bills, you're ready to get kicked out. I mean, uh, where do we stand in that position when the church is telling folks that? And my other thing would be, um, I remember when I came up in the Baptist church and uh and uh, was zealous at the point, young and into it. And them folks down there had that church where you could hear them drums and tambourines and all that kind of stuff. And, and we were scared of them folks. Them folks was, them folks was crazy. Them, them, folks was, man. Them, folks was, them folks was speaking in strange languages, jibber jarrys, they were speaking in tongues. I could take you to the scriptures and I could prove from the scriptures, several scriptures, that they were of the devil, that Woo! they were going to hell, that they that, that that they were not walking in the things of God, that it couldn't be true, and in everything, and I was hundred percent convinced, and I believed it with all my heart, and I had scripture support to back it up, and tradition <laughs> behind me that supported my position. And you know what's so strange about that? I don't feel that way today. I hear you. I don't feel that way today. Wow. It is something, Jim. It is. You know, there, there, there's something about the voice of God that helps us. And that's the thing that keeps ringing in my ear right now. The steps are really going to be great. It is great already. But can we hear God? And I remember the one scripture where it talked about if my sheep hear my voice and another, they will not follow. If I, if I think I can figure it out, I'm going to expend my energies observing materials and deducing and whatever the truth might be. But if I really think, if I'm trying to hear Pastor Taylor, I'm going to listen. I'm going to pick the phone up. I'm going to put it to my ear. I'm going to do all that's necessary for me to hear his voice. But if I think I can figure it out, I might not even query him, even though he has the answer. I don't know if people we have been taught to really listen to and for the voice of God. And we, yeah, we, he, serve, him, right? Right. we serve him. We serve him like he's dead. We really serve God like he's a dead God. And wow. We gotta figure it out. That's, wow. that's sad right there, but it's wow. true. That's and I think that's where a lot of air comes in here. We, yeah. we, we miss it. And, and, and it's hard to break that habit. I mean, we, I wasn't born listening to the voice of God or even listening for it. Let me say this. This will be the last thing I say. Uh, you know what, Pastor? You know, with Kairos and having to go down to the prison ministry and having to teach that particular aspect of Kairos on listening, yeah. uh, I've come to the conclusion that the greatest 
uh, catastrophe in the history of mankind, the one sense a uh, lost art that no one's ringing the bell about is the art, and it is the art of listening. Nobody listens. If, if you want to talk about avoiding the world today, it's the ability to listen. In other words, quiet in your mind, not being judgmental, not thinking about your rebuttal, not picking out points of what was wrong, yeah. not trying to show where they where they missed the mark, where you better, where you know better than them. To get uh, stop all of that and just put yourself in the other person's position, try to see it from their perspective. True and honest listening, and I, my opinion is you can't find one in a thousand. And so and when when we when I when I come from that perspective, what I just stated, man. What an indictment against us as a people that one of the senses that we was given, and in my opinion, the most important, we have come become derelict in yeah. by grossness and no one is sound, sounding the alarm. But I think nobody listens nowadays. No, because everybody knows, because everybody has research, because yeah. everybody has done, it got, got, got their, got to, to seek and point out to you all the things that are about it. Like I was talking about the speaking in tongues, because everybody got, they can prove from their own. So why should I even listen to you? I've already studied, I've already been to, I've already been with those groups. I've already looked at the scriptures. I don't need to listen to you. So listening, man, I'm gonna tell you something. In my heart, I believe it's the greatest lost art for mankind today. And then when we talk about the, the, the importance of listening, when it comes to the things of God, then wow, that says something. Yeah. well beyond what we're hearing right now out of my voice and I think that's a serious thing and that's just Jimmy 101 now I'm like I'm like brother I'm like the elder now that, that that's that's just a Jimmyism yeah well Jimmy, it's, it's, it's a it's a good ism you know I liken it to uh Bishop McCann now I truly am amazed how he sits back and he listens yeah and he listens and he listens and then he comes in and he asked a question and then you you can tell how the the anointing is is on him because he comes with a soft voice in the, the depthness of thought and yeah then, absolutely the time he's done that brother is on fire <laughs> but it's 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 pertinent and it's based off of him listening to the conversation and and taking notes and observing and then he comes in and, and you so, know what it's not so much he's listening to the conversation in my yeah. opinion he definitely is but you know what he listens to more than anything else the word of god the <laughs> voice the voice of god yes he's trying to hear from him yes he's trying to hear from him yes and that's why by 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 closing everything off and that's because he understands that that's the most important voice he can hear right now yes. and you know i i would i would say i would submit to you that the most important thing that he's trying to demonstrate to you is pointing toward christ pointing toward you to hear you know what i mean and saying that that's how you do it you listen and do you do you be discerning i mean that one scripture was talking about when when pontius Pilate was saying are you you the king and jesus was discerning are you well, how did you get that information? Yeah. You know, I need to know. I need to discern. I need to know whether you're discerning. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Or you hearing from me? You hear it from some, some people? Or did you hear it from my father? Come on, bro. Come yeah. on. So that's yeah. a very important. But we got to do the uh, communion real quick, if you don't mind. If you guys can get your communion cups together, if you got them. Bro Jackson. Is that late already? It's, uh, it's, he got, he got, I think he got a 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got to get ready to roll. So if you if you got your community, let's do that. Yeah, but that's why, why they getting the community together? I do like to see if you can read this uh, uh, Matthew's twenty four verse one through six for me, if you don't mind. Okay. Why they getting it? Why they those who get, those who can get theirs together uh, for communion? You know the Bible said, "Do this often, remember me." Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, brother Jackson, on that one for me. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? 
Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Yes, sir. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of that coming and of the end of the world? Yes, sir. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Listen, many, go ahead. many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and it shall deceive many. Wow. And ye shall hear of wars yeah. and rumors of wars. Uh -huh. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It's not yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, one of the things, take heed, that's Jimmy. I think Jimmy, that goes right back to listening, ain't it? Listen. You know what I'm saying? Brother Addison, listen. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think even with the uh even with the communion, it's the fact that he said, do this in remembrance. He's trying to keep us in remember. So you don't mm -hmm. succeed if you if you remember mm -hmm. what he did. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. Brother Jackson? So if you you don't forget. This that's I think he said, preach the word. Preach the word on Just preach it and teach it. And I guarantee right. you have an impact. Amen. Right. Those of you got communion, just for me, Brother Jackson, I appreciate it. All right. All right. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, right now we pause. We pause from this this the momentum that we've had from from discussing your word, um, from discussing and trying to learn more about you. Yes. And ultimately the relationship that we need to have with you. And because of you, we can have that in, more intimate relationship with God the Father. Yes. Jesus, if it wasn't for you. Yes. None of this, none of this, none of, none of the efforts, the, 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 the struggle, the strife. Come on. Uh, joy, happiness, peace, none of that would mean anything. Anything. If it was not for you. Amen. Yes. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo. You know, we know that you are our savior, but yet and still to try to put it all in our head. Mm -hmm. You're you are yourself beyond uh typical and normal understanding. It can only be done in the spirit. And we know that when it's all said and done, we'll have that that experience in what we do would will call forever. Yes. To be with you. Mm. to be in the presence of the Father. Yes. And in the totality of the Spirit of God. Yes. And so Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. That uh, not only did you share that moment with the disciples, but you shared that moment with us right now. Yes. <laughs> so that we do remember you. Yes. We remember how you lived. Come on. How Amen. you are the example, and you were the example, and you're still the example in the future. Yes. <laughs> And, and how you suffered mm. and how you the, the many 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 times that you prayed yes and how you denied your flesh because you are a hundred percent God yes. and you are a hundred percent man but yet and still you yielded to God the Father yes and how you suffered for us mm. and, and, and voluntarily gave your life for us yes and it is your precious blood your precious blood that was the sacrifice demanded by a holy God. Come on now. And Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Because God raised you from the dead. Yes. Because of what you did. Yes. To give him glory. Mm. So Jesus, right now we thank you. And we remember you. And we come to fellowship solely, not for ourselves. Come Oh, but for you. Come on. Hallelujah. We say these things in your precious and holy name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Take your bread and eat it in remembrance of Jesus. Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Now, Lord Jesus, we take, even if we don't have a physical cup with, with something in it, we know that spiritually, yes, there's a cup. We know. Hallelujah. <laughs> And Woo. you you had to pour it out. Come on now. Because <laughs> it came from your body. <laughs> that blood that was spilled for all mankind, Woo. that we would have a relationship yes. with God the Father for those who believe. 
So Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. Because without you, we are nothing but wretches. Mm. We're no good. There's nothing that we can do of ourselves that would be worthy of acceptance by God the Father. Yes. It's only through you and by you. And so we thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you. It's your blood for those who believe poured out upon us and God sees righteousness. Oh, in us. And we have that relationship with him. Woo. Jesus, we can say these things with words, mm. but you know what's in our heart. Come on. And so if there's anything in us that, yes. that gets in the way of our relationship with you and with God the Father and, and commune with the Holy Spirit, purge it now in us. Come on. And we thank you, dear Jesus. We thank you for who you are and what you're all about. Yes. And like you, you drank in, in that time with the disciples, we drank this cup yes. in remembrance of you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Heaven, I thank you for I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for all that you're going to do. I thank you for how you're healing us every day. You're renewing our minds every day. I thank you that it's not, as was said earlier, uh, our light, but the, light, but the light of the gospel, the light of the good news. Yes. We just thank you. And so help us to do right by you, dear Father. Lord, and we say all these things in Jesus' precious and holy name. In Jesus, thank you for praying for us and interceding. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Jackson. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. I will chat with you guys later. Praise uh, God. Amen. You know, hey, amen. Brother Addison, I like the fact that the scripture, Jesus, even Jesus said, do not be deceived. I mean, hey, that's basically a commandment. If everybody want to have a commandment, <laughs> that we can take that for a commandment. That's be true. not deceived. Huh? <laughs> be not to be deceived. He said that these things are going to happen. But you know it's gonna to happen to those who are perishing. More than anything else. And I agree with Jim in saying this, even the very elect can be tempted to be deceived. But if we keep focusing and turning back and listening, Jim, I think that's key too. Listen. That is the key to, yeah. to, to listen, not just to listen, <laughs> but to listen for God. Amen. You know, it's it's how can you have a relationship without communication? Oh. Talk now, talk, talk, talk. No, seriously, it, 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 it requires communication. Yes, sir. And so uh, that's prayer, hey. you know. And, and we tend to to talk to God and then just walk away from the conversation, like He has nothing to say. Exactly. Uh, even even uh, Elder said we we look at God as 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 though he's dead you Ooh. know that, that there's no no response to to be given and, and, and know, that, uh that that's that's that. terrible and the thing yeah. about it is that that is terrible and and he god is always trying to remind us that we should always look at him as the god of the living he's a living god right he's a living god but you know what what, what deception comes in brother it started back in the garden of eve because eve says she was deceived right she was deceived but but you know adam was not deceived she can claim she was deceived she said it right she said i was deceived i i was beguiled but he but but jesus said to adam because you hearken unto your wife mm -hmm. well the other words is that our job is to stay rooted stand firm in that word so that when the devil comes in to tell somebody you shall not surely die. Think about that. Those scriptures. Let, let me ask you. Go ahead, Jim. I'm going to ask a question. We know a minister been on fire for God, done everything he could. The last years of his life, he turns away from God, he begins to build temples to idols, to offer up sacrifice to idols, to worship all kinds of gods. We're, we're in our minds, based on our scriptures, Will we place Solomon? Where, where, where are we saying he is based on the fruits? What would be our judgment of him? At, I mean, what would be our judgment of him? Not like we know the story or we know what the scripture said, 
just in we observing and sitting on the outside looking, what would we say? I'm just asking. Are you talking about Solomon now? You talking about Solomon? I, I am. I yeah. am. Uh, what would we say about him and his eternity? What would we say? It, it, traditionally, we, we, we believe or uh, taught that Solomon was the greatest king, one of the greatest kings. Um, I think it's funny that you asked that question because I just reread that scripture the other day where it said that Solomon displeased God. <laughs> <laughs> He did. When he, he came, did. it came down to the end of his day, and it said that Solomon displeased God in the things that he did, and that he married those women, and they turned his heart away from God. Yeah. And you so know, at that point, I asked the same question that you just asked, and I have no answer to that. I, you know, I, mean, I have no answer. But, but let, let, let's, let's make sure to keep that in perspective anyway. And the fact is, he did what he did because of politics, didn't he? Well, I mean, he did all these marriages and everything else was all about politics, wasn't it? He said he loved them too, though. He said he loved them. Yeah, well, he loved them. I mean, I mean, I, I, they all human, got, human nature, human yeah, nature. That part, but the, <clears throat> how he got into the situation was politics. That was how they did treaties between different countries, right? That's how you 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 you, you submit it with a marriage. Yeah. And this guy married all these people because at that time. If y'all, at the height, I remember when I first started reading the scriptures and I, I got to where Solomon and, and, and all that glory he had, you had people coming all over the world to Israel to hear the wisdom of, of, of Solomon. And, and, and what happened was that through politics, he mixed the two together. But can I say something, Pastor? If I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, wasn't he forewarned of that very thing? He didn't go into it blindsided. He was told that that's exactly what was going to happen yeah, if he, he did was. those things. And this is where he would end up at. So it's not like he was duped or deceived or, or blind or ignorant. He was 100%, 100% eyes wide open knew because he didn't get it from some evil source that that's what was going to happen and yeah. that's where his heart would go he got it from god and yet he still still took that position yeah. and engaged in those practices he did and now i think that was the biggest tragedy of it is the fact is that uh i still think that he did those things because of politics and he did not he never you know to me i said see this reading correct me wrong it seemed to me with the wisdom of Solomon, because you remember when Bathsheba, it was, it was who's that lady that came the uh, from Ethiopia? Uh, Sheba. Huh? Sheba. Sheba, yeah. And, and she saw that glory that she fell out. I mean, when they came into the temple, then the clouds showed up inside the temple. And, and, and the wisdom and, and the glory of God was there. And, and you always ask yourself, out of that politics, why couldn't you just say, look, here's one of my biggest wisdom. God is God. We worship God. We want to have treaties with you. But you can't bring, one of the things you need to understand about our kingdom is you can't bring stuff that doesn't line up with our God. You, I, I, I understand you want me to marry this woman, but she can't bring her gods with us, with her, right? And that's where I think that politics comes in at. Well, we Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you. You got to use the same measures to get across all things. So you can't excuse him for politics. If that's what you're going to do, you got to use the same measure stick now and excuse the one that's in the office now and call it because of politics. So don't 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 lay out a measuring stick that you're not going to use across every every institution now because you got to use the same measuring stick with all situations. So I, I don't think I agree, Jimmy. I'm not, I'm I don't not, think putting that on politics. I think that's human nature. Right, right, right. But I'm saying is that was a vehicle used to get in there. That's that's probably what I'm trying to say. And that's probably why we not need not to be deceived when we get involved with these type of things. Is always stay focused on what the word says. Let the word be the guiding force for us. And I'm saying is when you talk about politics, now modern day time is that each of these parties and these other sub-parties have some element of truth in it, but it also has the elements that's not true. And if we don't watch out, 
the element. What is that? Ephesians. What did I say about a little leaven? Mess the whole thing up, right? It, 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 and that's what politics does. Well, I think it's like, um, you know, just, just the question is going to Solomon. When I, when I think about Solomon, I think about Solomon in the same way I think about Hitler. Uh -huh. I don't think, I don't think Solomon was there for any other reason other than to get us become a tune that we're no different from Solomon. Uh -huh. But we're no different from Hitler. Yeah. See, Solomon begins, begins his ministry with, a, with, with the understanding of his total lack and inability to rule. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's that is what attracts God to him. He realizes his inadequacy. He realizes his lack. He realizes that he is, he is the position of which he is totally incapable of fulfilling. And he starts off with a, with a heart of trusting God. So what we, I, I think what we need to understand is, is, is that not only must you start out that way, you must finish this race that way. Yes, sir. They, yes. And you see, there are things that get in on us, and I don't think it's politics. I think you can pick any one of them. Entertainment, it doesn't matter. Okay. The thing that makes all of us vulnerable is me. Mm. That when you get into the yes. thing, it's about God, it's about his people, how to go in and out before his people. It's how to be able to let God have influence on his people through him. It was not about Solomon, it's about Solomon and God. Uh -huh. But later on, all of this stuff, it became about Solomon. And that's a warning to us. You see, just because we've been in this thing and having these conversations, don't think you don't think we stay now in and ourselves. Come on now. Come on. I, I was watching the thing with him on yesterday when I saw some of the stuff that he did. I, I brought me to a place of tears because what I realized, I'm sitting there and I'm saying, and God is saying to me, don't, don't get, don't think funny now, because that thing that's in Hitler is in you. Mm. Yeah. And unless you are willing to submit to me, I'm the one that decrees that that thing got to die. You see, and that's for, see, that's why dying on a daily basis is necessary. Solomon, McCann, Johnson, come on, dying Jimmy. daily. See, you can you can't just die for a season because the scripture says that Paul said, "I bear in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the mm. life of Jesus might be made manifest." Yes, in my own yes. Body. yes. Whenever you stop dying, you're in trouble. Woo. Apparently Solomon got involved in a whole lot of stuff, got caught up in some stuff, let some stuff slip and, yeah. and kind of drifted away. Yeah. And that's the, see, that's the power of the enemy to deceive. He don't care that you thought I good. Yeah. He didn't press that you ran you ran well out the gate. <laughs> the problem, be that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, sir. <laughs> so when I look at Solomon, come on, preach, so preach. It caused, it caused me to realize that, listen, that, that thing that, that, that got a hold of Hitler and moved him to do some of the hideous, most inhumane thing you can dream of, yeah. that rascal is study sifting you because he knows if he can get you to just lose your focus, he can get you too. Yeah. So that when I think about Solomon, Solomon is, 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 is for me one of the most Solomon's warning to us. Not, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. We ought to, right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on.